The threat of a possible rail strike revealed the fragility of supply chain issues on the U.S. economy. These shortages have been impacted by COVID lockdowns in China, a rise in energy prices, and a decision from OPEC to reduce oil production. At the Port of Los Angeles, cargo has dropped between 20 and 25 percent in recent months, shifting over to the East Coast and some other ports as well. Joining us right now is Gene Soroka, the Port of Los Angeles director. And Gene, it's really good to see you. It's been a while since we've spoken, and things have changed pretty drastically. Yeah, they sure have. It's great to be back on the set, Becky. What we saw was an earlier than normal peak season. June, July numbers were just off the charts. First seven months rivaled last year's all time record volume, and then the bottom dropped out. We saw a lot of cargo owners, both importers and exporters, shift their goods over to the east and Gulf Coast to avoid what they thought would be labor disruption. So what's the situation? Your longshoremen have been working without a contract, I think, since July when the last one expired. How, how are things going? Where's the negotiation? How do things stand? That's right. And that's pretty typical for these two groups, the Pacific Maritime Association, or the employers group, and the ILWU, the dock workers. They're going out towards the far edge of negotiations, which would land us in about February, March of next year, where I see an agreement taking place. It won't get done this year, but both sides are at the table with seasoned negotiations and the rank and file on the docks just keep moving cargo. Productivity is good. What, what's going to happen? I mean, we, we've just watched this with the railroad workers. Um, they had what we thought was a pretty good deal that had been overseen by a presidential advisory board that many of the unions um, ratified, but three or four of them did not. And that really created some significant problems. By the way, there were 24 percent pay increases. What's this negotiation look like at this point? What are the big sticking points and what kind of pay increases will we see? If you had to break it down, the real difference, Becky, is there's no hard deadline with the dock workers on the West Coast like there was on the rail side of the business. I mean, the rail side, it had been three years, I think, they were past their contract. So the, That's the contract right. they just struck is going back three years. Right. And then you saw deadlines from the fall all the way through to these uh, actions that Congress took last week. On the dock worker side, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, big issues like automation or robotics, pay, training and education, as well as health benefits. They've been stuck on an issue around jurisdiction of work up in Seattle, one terminal, one location. But I think as we come out of this into the beginning of next year, you'll start to see a glide path towards to an agreement. At the same time, this is not only a coast-wide agreement, but you've got 29 ports up and down the West Coast that need their local agreements done, too. So collective bargaining is hard. I mean, I just saw the numbers that the Port of New York, New Jersey, right here, had bigger volume than the California ports for the first time in, in, in years, I think, at this point. Are you worried that 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 volume won't come back to you even after a negotiation is struck? I'm super competitive, but it keeps me running to work every day. We've been in the pole position for 22 years. Last couple of months doesn't make a trend, but there will be cargo that sticks to these East and Gulf Coast ports. It's gone through a change, moving pretty fluidly. And once a supply chain gets ingrained, it doesn't move very easily. Yet I get no real satisfaction from seeing ships backed up in ports on the Gulf and East Coast when we've got about 25 <laughs> percent shade. latent capacity you in L.A. throwing shade there, saying that they are backed up in these other places and you could handle them at this point. That's fact. Well, OK. They, if, if part of this is sticky, doesn't that motivate a quicker negotiation instead of letting this ride out to the middle of next year or the early part of next year. Get it done quickly before you lose even more. You would think so, but both sides have the DNA to show their membership that they've squeezed everything they possibly can out of the negotiations. I've been crisscrossing the country over the last six weeks trying to explain the ground to truth to importers and exporters as well as service providers. At the same time, show these sides we've got to get this deal done before it unravels.